Hello there my music lovers, I'm Joshua de File Heaven and today we are doing a review on the LAM1 from Lotto. This is an in-ear monitor with one dynamic driver, 10 millimeters in diameter and uh, a pretty stealthy design, basically made for music recorders or for those who do sound design. So let's get down to it. The LAM1 is interesting to say the least. It is priced at about 270 US dollars. It comes with this large and beautiful package and has a ton of accessories. I originally received it as part of a bundle with the Lotopo One recorder, but I decided that it is worth its own video review. This is how we got here. The package, as you can see, is quite large and quite interesting. It comes with one carrying case, also with some paperwork, and we have a good selection of tips. The carrying case looks pretty cool, and it offers good protection to the LAM1. Those are some really stealthy looking EMs, like you could wear them and not even know that you're wearing a, a pair of high-end EMs, this is how stealthy they are. But that is in a good sense, usually I said this about Periodic Audio and their original series because they looked kinda basic. Well, the LAM1 doesn't really look basic, it looks professional, but it looks professional for content creators rather than for music listeners. And this is pretty much how they also sound like, they sound professional, they are very neutral in sound with a very neutral type of bass, but extreme amounts of detail and resolution. They tend to beat most EMs in the 300 US dollars price range, which is where they mainly fight, and they have this really nifty stealth design. They have detachable cables, which is pretty cool. The cables are based on two pin connectors and not the recess type, but the normal type of two pin connectors. They have ventilation so that you have no driver flex with the LAM1 and they offer you between 20 and 25 decibels of passive noise isolation depending on the frequency we're talking about. This is pretty much perfect for a content creator. You can use them to monitor your recorder or you can use them to listen to music. They come with a 3.5 millimeter single ended jack and since they have a detachable cable they will be compatible with most other <laughs> music sources. Although they do have a detachable cable, the cable and the EMs kind of fit perfectly together. They just have this cut design where you are best if you use their default cable but they are compatible with pretty much all of the other aftermarket cables. At 280 US dollars I was surprised to learn that this is what they cost because I was just writing my review on the Lotopo one and then I remembered yeah it came with some EMs and what was the price of those EMs and I couldn't find that out instantly. So I grabbed them and started listening to them and told to myself man those should get their own review. Man, those really sound nice. And uh, I thought to myself, they must be around 300 US dollars. This is what I thought to myself while doing the review on them. And <laughs> reviewer experience, this is pretty much what they cost. They also go on sale for 200 US dollars, at least on Music Tech, when I last checked, and uh, that may be a good offer to check out. The build quality is impressive. The cable is extremely flexible, only very slightly springy, but not very tangle prone. As you can see, it won't tangle with itself. The EMs are made of metal, but they are light, they are ergonomic, and they are tiny. They are quite good in terms of sizing. As you can see, placing them in my ear looks pretty natural. I cannot feel them while wearing them, and they don't really protrude too much, although I probably wouldn't recommend sleeping with them, because they are still metallic and they might create some discomfort. The installed tips are perfect in size for me. I have no complaints, I am getting excellent overall comfort, I am getting no distractions from music and from sound, they have no microphonic noise on the cable, they are rather easy to drive, you won't need to break the bank on a source, and they are pretty much perfect for their intended purpose. Those are monitoring games, which means that they are made to be neutral, extremely revealing, and detailed. As far as the sources for driving the LAM1, I have used the Lotto Po 6000 and the Astel and Kern SA180, both of which did a great job, but the Lotopo 6000 has a really easy to use equalizer, which means that you could just grab it, engage the equalizer, and enjoy a fuller, lower sound with more bass, which is pretty much what they require. This is the only thing I would really change to the Lotto LAM1. I mean, the rest of the sound is absolutely perfect. And then I mean perfect, I mean 
perfect. It is so incredibly detailed and clear and at the same time it is not fatiguing. It, they have a sound that is really smooth and enjoyable and musical, but it is extremely detailed. The detail quantity is just impressive. They don't have the largest of sound stages, which is good because they have a natural sound stage and a very good instrument separation. This means that when recording you will know whether the sound is too wide or it is perfect in width and in depth. This is absolutely ideal in my book because you don't want to purchase an EM and then discover that they are changing the sound compared to what you expect to get. They have that very neutral bass which is enjoyable with some music, for example with rock and metal because they have a really really quick bass and really detailed bass, but at the same time for electronic music or for jazz or for music where you want a bit more of that low impact, they tend to be a bit too neutral and that neutrality will be a dominant factor for the Lotto LAM1 because when listening to music you are usually used to hearing a ton of impact and a ton of bass and they do have a ton of impact but they do not have a lot of bass, they have a very neutral sound, it is pretty much perfectly neutral and that is something to take into account when ordering them. I think that listening to music is an excellent experience even if you use the Lotto Po 1 music player or recorder. That one has an excellent headphone output and sometimes I just wish that they made a version with a micro SD slot because the 64 gigabytes of internal memory really aren't enough for music listening. My music library is quite a bit larger. The Lotto LAM1 has a ton of competition actually and there are a ton of EMs especially in the around 300 US dollars price range that have been recently released for example the 7 Hz Eternal is a very good competitor and there is also the Xen Manjird T2 which is also very good and very competitive. Comparing it to those two in particular because those two are very popular and are sold by Lin Soul which is a very big shop and very popular, big competitor to music tech. Even if you are from the USA, you tend to order a lot from Lin Soul if you are a big music lover. But the 7 Hz Eternal has a very V-shaped sound compared to the Lotto LAM1. The Lotto LAM1 has a more neutral bass, which means less bass quantity, but they have better overall resolution and better overall detail. The detail and clarity of music is just a bit better on the Lotto LAM1. The Lotto LAM1 also has better overall extension in the treble, where uh, you can hear some treble roll off, although it is not very noticeable on the 7 Hz Eternal. On the Lotto LAM1, you just get the full width of the treble. You just hear every single bit of air that there is to hear in music. And that is good because when something starts to become a bit harsh or a bit aggressive, the Lotto LAM1 will reveal that, even though they aren't very harsh by nature. Compared to them, the 7 Hz Eternal doesn't really sound so natural in the mid-range and it doesn't really capture that natural tonality. The 7 Hz Eternal is a bit more enjoyable with music, especially if you are listening to a ton of music that is bass driven, for example, EDM, electronic, dubstep. So the Lotto LAM1 will lose a bit in those aspects. On the other hand, comparing it to the Xen Mangird T2, the Xen Mangird T2 is very different. The Xen Mangird T2 doesn't really have a lot of bass either, but it has a more forward mid-range that doesn't sound quite as cold. The Xen Mangird T2 is more warm, it is more musical and it is more fluid. Compared to it, the Lotto LAM1 sounds more detailed, considerably more clean and clear, but also brighter and just a bit colder in general. The sound of the Lotto LAM1 isn't the warmest out there and they are perfect for monitoring. I would insist on this. If you are looking for an EM that is absolutely honest with what you're recording, the Lotto LAM1 is perfect. On the other hand, if you are looking for something to enjoy voices, the Xenman Gear T2 is easier to recommend at this point. Also, if you are looking for an EM for dubstep or electronic music, or if you just generally enjoy a ton of bass, the 7 Hz Eternal is also easier to recommend in the Lotto LAM1. Each one of those is made for a different usage scenario. Each one of them plays music differently and is perfect for a different type of music. I would consider that the Lotto LAM1 is perfect if you want to hear that studio setting, if you want to hear exactly how the recording was intended to go. And usually you don't want to hear just that, usually you just want to have some fun. Concerts aren't about sounding studio, concerts always sound colored, always have a ton of bass. The bass is bloated in most concerts, the bass is overwhelming in most concerts, the volume level is overwhelming in most concerts. And that is something that the Lotto LAM1 will show if you listen to a live concert, which is 
Very interesting to hear. Speaking of volume, they have an amazing amount of headroom and they can be equalized to have more bass, they can be equalized to be even brighter or to be darker or to be smoother. And Lotto LAM1 is one of those EMs that has just a ton of dynamics, a ton of detail to imbue the sound with. They don't really roll off early, which means that you can pretty much get any sound you want out of them if you spend enough time equalizing them. They don't really have any absurd peaks or dips that would change the sound dramatically from what is considered natural, which means that the Lotto LAM1 is perfect when you want to hear music as it was intended to be. I hope that the way I intended my videos to be are fun. I hope that you are having a good time on Audiophile Heaven. Don't forget, I have a PayPal link in the video description if you want to donate a dime to me. I also would really appreciate if you could use the purchase links that I usually leave in my video descriptions. I do hope that you end up having the most awesome week in there. I hope that you have the best week of your life. Just have a ton of fun for me. If you are watching this video and if you stick with me until the ending, just have fun out there. Please do it for me. Also, I hope you will leave a like on this video and subscribe to Audiophile Heaven. It really helps me out. And don't forget to see each other really, really soon. Bye bye.